Good afternoon. I'm Jillian Black, and welcome to the Department of Family and Support Services Caregiver Respite Services RFP web webinar. Just a few housekeeping rules. Due to the volume of participants, everyone has been placed on mute. Please submit questions via the question box and we will respond to questions at the midpoint and end of the presentation. Please use the question box to notify us of any technical issues. Please be advised this webinar is being recorded. Anything stated at this webinar is not intended to change the solicitation document. Any changes will be in writing in the form of an addendum issued by the Department of Family and Support Services. The purpose of this webinar is to provide information for the solicitation. A copy of the recording will be posted on the DFSS YouTube channel with the link to the recording and a PDF to these PowerPoint slides will be posted to the DFSS web, web page under alerts and or funding opportunities. Please give it up to five business days to upload. DFSS retains the right to share a list of registrants to this webinar along with their contact and organizational information at our discretion. As for the agenda, we will uh, go through the welcome and introductions, following um, up with the purpose, um, the background, information about the scope and program description, the selection criteria, timeline, technical assistance for applicants and e-procurement, and then a final round for questions. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to introduce our team. My name is Stacy Subita. I am a supervisor of Family and Support Services, and I will hand it along to my colleague, Veronica. Yes, and I am Veronica Whitby Cozy, Community Living Specialist. Welcome, everyone. And I am Jillian Black. I'm the Procurement Proposal Coordinator here at DFSS to assist with any e procurement issues. And first, we're going to go over our mission, which is working with community partners, we connect Chicago residents and families to resources that build stability, support their well-being, and empower them to thrive. Our priorities, to deliver and support high-quality, innovative, and comprehensive services that empower clients to thrive collaborate with community partners, sister agencies, and public officials on programs and policies that improve Chicagoans' lives and advance systematic change. Inform the public of resources available to them through DFSS and its community partners, steward DFSS, resources, responsibility, and effectively. Next slide. Within DFSS, there are seven divisions, which are Children's Services, Division on Domestic and Gender-Based Violence, Homelessness Services, Human Services, Workforce Services, Youth Services, and finally, Senior Services, which is comprised of nutrition, caregiving, in-home care, information and benefits, elders' rights and advocacy. We also have our regional and satellite senior centers that are staffed by DFSS employees. Next slide. So the purpose of the RFP, the Caregiver Respite Services RFP seeks organizations who have experience managing comprehensive citywide respite programs, including outreach, assessments, creating person-centered plans of respite care and coordinating the most appropriate in-home and facility-based respite care for caregivers of any age who are providing support to adults 60 years of age or older or to an individual under 60 with Alzheimer's disease or a related dementia. Respondents may include, but are not limited to, for-profit or non-for-profit organizations, universities, hospitals, healthcare providers, faith-based organizations, and or organizations that support older adults and or their caregivers. 
The selected respondent is expected to deliver 25,000 hours of respite care and 350 to 400 assessments per fiscal year for at least 300 50 to 400 participants based upon the current rate of services and targeted outcomes will include 80% of caregivers self-reported reduced stress and 80% of caregivers report they are able to continue to provide care for the care recipient as a result of the intervention. Next slide. So for the background, the Senior Service Division is also designated as the Local Area on Aging AAA for the City of Chicago. As a AAA DFSS coordinates and funds services for older adults, prioritizing those in greatest economic and social needs, those who live alone and those at risk for institutional placement. Working in collaboration with aging network partners, the Senior Services Division's efforts are guided by supporting older persons to live independently in, the in their own communities and homes for as long as possible ensuring that those who reside in institutions are treated with dignity and care and guaranteeing that older persons have access to accurate information to, to participate in public policy. Together our service with our services, we will provide vital information and assistance, congregate and home delivered meal services, senior centers, fitness classes, caregiver support services, in-home services, employment training, and volunteer opportunities, elder rights, healthcare promotion, and access to benefits. We continually innovate and advocate for our residents so they may continue to thrive as they age in place. We value integrity and respect, as well as promoting social engagement among the elderly as an antidote to dependence, social isolation, and withdrawal. And so for more information on DFSS strategic framework, you can visit the website listed here, which is www cityofchicago.org slash FSS. Next slide. Continuing with our background, the program is funded by the Title III of the Older Americans Act, Federal, State, and Alzheimer's Disease and Related Dementia, ADRD, Title III, and the American Rescue Plan, ARP, if available, and must provide a comprehensive assessment, referral, and management of appropriate services, including the following. In-home respite services provided by an in-home care provider, including preferred caregivers nominated by the care recipient in the client's home or other setting. Facility-based respite. Added independent living, assisted living, supportive living, adult day service, or a nursing home facility. DFSS will provide 550,000 in funding to one delegate agency to meet the needs of caregivers and care recipients citywide. Next slide. We're gonna talk a little bit about the goals. Within six months of a client T-Care initial assessment, the goals of the caregiver respite program are the following. To alleviate caregiver stress, burnout, and social isolation by 80%. Improve the caregiver self-report of health and wellness by 60%. Reporting good or very good health Increase their ability to take care of themselves, for example, taking medications, scheduling and keeping medical appointments, and self-care. Increase caregivers' confidence to self-report 80%. Continue to provide care for the care recipient at home. Decrease and or delay caregiver intention to place care recipient in an institution by 80%. Next slide. Through the citywide implementation of caregiver in home and facility based respite intervention, increasing respite services units to 25,000 and targeting 300 caregivers in FY 2025. 
success will be measured by service utilization tracked in the Aging IS database platform, T-Care initial assessment and follow-up calls, and participant survey feedback. DFSS will collect quarterly client satisfaction surveys in both paper and online format from participants in respite services for FY 2025 to ensure their needs are being met. The result of participant surveys will be compi compiled and assessed for participant satisfaction and quality improvement, as well as feedback that will assist with scheduling. Next slide. Current state of and priorities for improvement. Now, the estimated total of caregivers in the United States is 53 million dollars, excuse me, 53 million individuals. More than one in five Americans are caregivers. 61% of caregivers are white, non-Hispanic, 17% are Hispanic, 14% are um, 17% are Hispanic Latino, 14% are Black African American, 5% are Asian American or Pacific Islander. In Illinois, one in 10 caregivers rate their own health as fair or poor. 60% of family caregivers work either full or part-time jobs in addition to their caregiver duties. According to the CDC, one year of unpaid or informal caregiver activity in the U.S. was estimated at $450 million. The Illinois Department on Aging estimates that there are over 400,000 caregivers in Chicago, with approximately 70,000 falling between the ages of 60 and 74, and 20,000 between the ages of 75 to 84. While 30% of caregivers feel respite services would help them, only 14% of caregivers receive respite. In 2023, DFS service 291 clients in the caregiver respite services, resulting in 26,670 hours of services. In FY 2022, DFS service 263 clients and 11,750 hours of service. Next slide. Our targeted population. A caregiver means an adult family member or another individual of any age providing informal, in-home and community care to an older adult, 60 years of age or older or a care recipient with Alzheimer's disease or related dementia under 60. A care recipient may be considered an individual 60 years of age or older or a person with dementia, which may include an individual with undiagnosed memory loss or diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's dementia, vascular dementia, frontal temporal dementia, primary progressive aphasia, or other related conditions. The selected respondent must provide services for caregivers, including those with limited English proficiency, and must have access to staff with language skills that reflect the needs of the caregiver serviced or translation services. Caregivers must be prioritized based on the Older Americans Act, Title III, which states preference for older persons with the greatest economic or social need. In particular, caregivers with low income, minority older individuals, and traditionally underserved limited English proficiency, LGBTQ, and other adults living with HIV. To be eligible, family caregivers must be providing home and community-based care to older adults who meet the following definition of frail, as outlined in the Older Americans Act. The program requirements. The selected respondent will be responsible for the program management, which includes the following, outreach, 
Comprehensive Assessment, T-Care, Selection Process for Service Providers, Determine How to Match Respite Clients to Selected Providers, Evaluation and Program Impact of Caregiver Serves. Outreach. The selected respondent must conduct ongoing outreach activities citywide to ensure participation of eligible individuals in the program. Outreach efforts may include, but are not limited to community presentations, brochures, flyers, webinars, or social media. The selected respondent should take care to use language that caregivers understand. Some people do not identify with the word caregiver as a label and consider themselves to be spouses, daughters, sons, grandchildren, or friends. Likewise, respite is a policy term and requires explanation to lay, audience, to lay audiences about what respite is and why it is important. DFSS will facilitate outreach opportunities through its senior centers and all brochure flyers and outreach materials will include the DFSS information and assistance INA phone number for the intake calls. So the intake process, DFSS, Information and Assistance, INA, is the lead contact to receive intake calls and refer caregivers to the selected respondent. The selected respondent may take direct referrals. However, the referral should be forwarded to DFSS, INA. The respondent, at minimum, must be available to accept these referrals during DFSS working hours, which are 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., Monday through Friday, every week of the year, except New Year's Day, Martin Luther King Day, President's Day, Lincoln's Birthday, Pulaski Day, Memorial Day, Juneteenth, Independence Day, Labor Day, Columbus Day, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Referrals can be made to INA by calling 311 or 312-744-4016 or email aging at cityofchicago.org. Program, okay, and so for our priority levels, we have them in three categories. The first being emergency. The family slash informal caregiver is in a crisis or is at risk of harming their care recipient or themselves. If respite services are not provided immediately or the care recipient is in danger of imminent nursing home placement, hospitalization without respite services, the delegate agency must contact and assess the family and informal caregiver immediately and provide aid within 24 hours, including weekends, or as otherwise necessary. The delegate agency may downgrade the referral after speaking with the family, informal caregiver, and is required to document the justification for the change in status. Urgent referrals. Services for the family slash informal caregivers who are not in any immediate crisis or danger of harming themselves or others or care recipients who are not in imminent danger of nursing home placement or suffering a significant loss. The situation warrants prompt attention, primary with the family and the care informal caregiver or care recipient situation is likely to change or deteriorate in less, uh, in less than two weeks. The delegate agency must contact and complete the assessment with the family or informal caregiver within three business days and must provide assistance within seven business days. The delegate agency has the right to upgrade or downgrade the referral after speaking with a family or informal caregiver. The standard referral. These referrals do not 
warrant a level of urgency or emergency. The delegate agency must contact the family or the caregiver within three business days and assess within 10 business days. The delegate agency has, the, has up to 30 calendar days from the date of the initial intake to provide assistance. The delegate agency does have the right, again, to upgrade the referral after speaking with the family or informal caregiver. So for T-Care, the respondent is to utilize the T-Care assessment tool to help caregivers utilize services that might give them the most long-term impact in the most meaningful way. During the T-Care assessment, the respondent is required to create a care plan with the family or informal caregiver and care receiver. Assessment should be completed in a person, virtual options, telephone, and web-based tools, such as Microsoft Teams, Skype, Zoom, can be provided as an alternative in extenuating circumstances. The selected respondent should notify the caregiver that their services have been approved in writing via email or U.S. mail if, mail, if email is not available. When applicable, the selected respondent should encourage the participants to access the online screener link, uh, which is listed below here. Um, and it is also on the DFSS website. Next slide. So let's talk a little bit about the units of service under the TCAR assessment. The unit of service measured measurement is one in-person full assessment. The unit includes time spent in direct interaction with the caregiver and should include travel, paperwork, planning, and administrative duties. Once the T-Care assessment has been completed, the provider will enter caregiver information into Aging IS. Each client will be fully assessed during a fiscal year or more frequently based on the client need. Selected respondents are also required to conduct quarterly follow-up calls, which may warrant a full reassessment if the client's need has changed. Service activities by respite setting. So the respondent, the selected respondent must develop a list of providers and a process for inclusion on the list. Two types of caregiver respite services include individual respite provided in home or other setting and facility-based respite using, using supportive living, adult day services, assisted living, and nursing home settings as appropriate. Selected respondents should include a different array of providers in each category throughout Chicago. Person-centered options should be offered. For example, if the caregiver or care recipient has a respite facility of their choice, the selected respondent may attempt to partner or subcontract with the facility under DFSS respite reimbursement guidelines. Referral criteria for matching clients with each provider should include type of service, geography, and any special programs or populations served, such as services with culturally appropriate amenities. The respite provider must adhere to standard outline in the administrative codes for the Illinois Department on Aging and the Illinois Department of Public Health. In-home respite services. In-home respite services provide general non-medical supported by home care providers to maintain the safety and daily activities of the older adult in their home. Uh, the following must be included in in-home respite, provide respite services seven days a week, 24 hours a day, including holidays, 
ensure that no client household receives more than 100 hours of service per fiscal year unless authorized uh, unless otherwise authorized by DFSS ensure that staff have undergone an FBI state and sex offender background check adult protective service registry check and do not have a criminal record have written policies and procedures to ensure that all clients' property is treated with care and respect by all staff. Have access to staff or telephone or computer-based translation services with language skills that reflect the needs of the client host household serve. And this could include examples of Spanish, Chinese, Polish, or the Russian language. So our in-home respite activities may include assistance with activities of daily living or ADLs, including bathing, toileting, dressing, cleaning, teeth, dentures. Bathing may include preparing supplies, monitoring of non-medical personal care, such as shaving, shampooing, combing, assistance with sponge bath, standby assist with tub, bath, or shower when clients are able to enter and exit themselves. Assistance with instrumental activities of daily living, IADLs, including meal preparation, cooking, shopping, cleaning. Communication and social activities, including spending time with the care receiver, in addition to providing care as needed, talking, reminiscing, individual or group activities and outings to places in the community, such as shopping, museums, parks, libraries, senior centers, etc. Monitoring the senior client's well-being and reporting to caregiver and caregiver manager any problems, concerns, and successes. Units of service for in-home respite. A unit of in-home respite service is defined as one hour of respite workers' time spent expended on behalf of the direct care or supervision of a care recipient who meets the definition of frail as outlined in the Older Americans Act. The city will not reimburse for travel time to and from a client's home. Facility-based respite. Facility-based respite services is when the care recipient is temporarily placed by the caregiver in an institutional setting, such as a nursing home, independent living, adult day services, assisted living, or supportive living facility for a short period of time as, for, as a respite to the caregiver. The selected respondent must provide respite services seven days a week, 24 hours a day, including holidays, ensure that no client household receives more than 240 hours or 10 days of service per fiscal year unless authorized by DFSS, ensure that the staff have undergone FEI state and sex offender background checks, adult protective service registry checks, and do not have a criminal record. Have access to the staff with language capacities that reflect the demographics of the client's household serve. And again, we have these different examples of the languages, Spanish, Chinese, Polish, Russian, to name a few. Facility-based Caregiver respite activities may include the ADLs, as mentioned previously, IADLs, and that includes that meal preparation and cooking and cleaning, monitoring the senior's client well-being and report to that caregiver and care manager of any problems, concerns, or successes. During the care planning process, the selected respondent must document hours used any future plans for the remaining unused hours, respite hours may be used at one time or split throughout the fiscal year. Hours may also be split between different types of services based on the information obtained during the assessment and care plan process. So units of service for the facility-based respite a unit of facility-based 
respite service is defined as one unit per hour. For example, an overnight stay in a facility would be 24 units of service. Facility stays may be customized with the caregiver per hours of service needed. Overnight stay is not required. Caregivers may use in combination both facility and in-home respite services. Facility-based respite services, which requirements for choosing the caregiver respite providers, organizational capacity, provide emergency and urgent respite services seven days a week, 24 hours a day, including those holidays and or standard respite services at least five days a week. Ensure respite providers are licensed by the Illinois Department of Health and Family Services, IDHFS, a list of provider sites and a copy of their licenses, letters of support, and a memoranda of understanding will be submitted by the selected respondent prior to the RFP start date. The contractual award agreement is contingent upon the submission of, the, of these documents. Commitment that provider staff have undergone a background check, do not have a criminal record, and have an appropriate qualifications for their roles depending on the setting. Commitment that provider staff undertakes regular training and education that can meet the needs of respite clients, have written policies and procedures to ensure that all clients' property is treated with care and respect by all staff, have access to staff or telephone or computer-based translation services with language skills that reflects the needs of the household served. Next slide. Cost and rates. The, the selected respondent is authorized and encouraged to negotiate lower costs with the individual respite providers that will provide clients with additional service provision. The selected respondent is responsible for paying the provider for the cost of care for recipients and invoicing DFSS. The, care, the caregiver respite provider is then reimbursed by DFSS. Rates are reflected below and can be customized to each caregiver um, DYAD as needed. Provi providers should contract with a variety of settings to include a range of options. Contingent upon funding, resources will be allocated to each area. Services will be reimbursed at a variety of rates depending upon the type of setting and level of care provider. Applicants should submit a range of settings to reflect the needs of older adults, including but limited uh, but limited to independent, adult daycare, assisted living, memory assisted, skilled nursing, supportive living. The award funding will reflect a variety of respite options as described in this proposal, including any new proposals presented. The applicant, uh, subject to a, the applicant is subject to approval of DFSS. Hours and or days will be capped, contingent upon available funding. In the past, available respite hours have been increased or limited to ensure service availability to a wide range of clients. For example, in-home respite, limited at 100 hours and facility base day at 10 days. Next slide. So our cost and rates continued. Applicants should submit a range of settings to reflect the needs of the older adults, included but not limited to independent adult day services, assisted living, memory assisted, skilled, supportive living. The awarded funding will reflect a variety of respite options as described in the proposal, including new, any new proposals presented. The applicant is subject to DFSS approval. Hours and days can be capped as previously stated. Uh, it is contingent upon the available funding. Uh, 
here we have the example again of the in-home respite is limited to 100 hours and the facility base is limited to a 10 day stay. In instances where funds are required to exceed the amount, this amount, written approval from the DFSS program manager will be required and approved or rejected based on the funding availability. The unit rates prepared by the respondent for this proposal should be based on the actual cost incurred. All travel and related program expenses must be included in the unit rate. No additional costs will be added to the monthly invoice for other expenses. The applicant must document the justification for arrival for arriving at the proposed unit rate, such as line item budget that can be used to determine the average hourly rate of services per respite type. And for our contingency planning, I'm going to turn it back over to my colleague, Stacy Sabita. Thank you, Veronica. So in terms of contingency planning for this program, special emphasis should be placed on developing these types of plans for any type of emergency that may require a change in service delivery. These can include, um, but is not limited to, health-related um, uh, emergencies, such as the COVID-19 19 pandemic or weather related emergencies such as the heat wave. Um, sometimes it will be necessary to transition some of the interventions to other delivery methods if officials deem that in person programs are unsafe. The selected respondents should develop policies and procedures to include sections on training, PPE, and health screenings. The policies and procedures must be in, court, in accordance with the Centers for Disease Control and the Illinois Department of Public Health, as well as the Federal Emergency Management Guidance. Any type of emergency plan should be submitted in writing or electronically to DFSS and we must notify the DFSS program manager within 24 hours should the emergency plan go into effect. Next slide, please. As far as staff qualifications and requirements, the respondent is required to assign and maintain for the duration of services a staff or personnel who is qualified to perform the services. They will retain or make available um, uh, the proof of certification or expertise, including but not limited to licenses, resumes, or job descriptions. The staffing pattern must include appropriate management and supervisory staff to conduct the comprehensive assessment services, as well as arrange respite providers for the family caregivers receiving the service. The program coordinator or director um, should be the key contact to DFSS, being able to manage program operations and oversee providers. This person will supervise program staff and have over accountability for the requested service delivery that meets caregiver and client needs as outlined in this RFP. Again, this is the central point of contact for DFSS and this position may not be vacant at any time during the contract period. It is preferred that this um, staff member have master's in, in social science field, but it is not a requirement. They must have at least five years related social service, counseling, or administrative experience. We also are asking that there be an assessment replacement coordinator who will conduct the comprehensive assessments of the caregiver and care receiver and determine the appropriate placement with respite providers. Um, again, we do have a preference that the staff have a master's degree, but it is again not required um, and that they have at least five years of related social service experience. The selected respondent must assign trained respite workers to provide the in-home respite services, and they must have a valid business li license to operate in Illinois. Services shall continue to be provided regardless of staff turnover, and the selected respondent should provide regular training and supervision to respite workers. They should maintain the respite worker schedules or timesheets as documentation of actual service provision. We ask that all respondents comply to applicable federal, state, local ordinances and policies um, relating to background checks, fingerprinting, and screening procedures to ensure the safety of our clients. So in connection with the services, um, 
You know, we do not permit anyone to be involved with the direct contact with seniors if any of these legal requirements would prohibit them um, from having contact, uh, contact. Background checks are an allowable cost if they are included in advance in the agency budget. Anyone who is 18 years of age or older, whether they be staff or volunteers, um, must have a background check completed. And delegate agencies should be able to timely re report to DFSS should there be any incidents. As part of the Older Americans Act, Title III e-grant agreement, the delegate agency um, may accept um, contributions. It is strictly voluntary and no client will be refused for services if they do not contribute. DFSS reserves the right to create a letter requesting contributions, and um, the respondent must collect, report, record, and report any contributions to DFSS. They may not, however, charge for any services provided under the grant agreement. Um, the selected respondent is encouraged to collect the information as appropriate. Next slide, please. As far as performance measures to track the progress to achieving the outcome goals of this program and to assess success, we will monitor the following indicators. 80% of caregivers indicating reduced stress, burnout, and social isolation. 60% of caregivers reporting increased feelings of good or very good health. 80% of caregivers reporting that they are able to continue to provide care for the care recipient. 80% of clients surveyed indicating overall satisfaction with the services provided. 80% of caregivers self-reporting increased confidence to continue to provide care for the care recipient at home. 80% of caregivers decreasing or delaying caregiver intention to place the care recipient into an institution. And that 100% of the emergency referrals are responded to within the designated time frame. To monitor and recognize intermediate progress towards the performance indicators, we will be tracking output metrics that may include 350 to 400 clients and 25,000 units of individual home care respite and or facility-based respite to be provided annually. 350 to 400 units of service, which includes 150 reassessments annually. In addition to the performance indicators and output metrics above, we encourage the respondent to propose additional indicators and metrics to demonstrate early success and that is indicative of the participant's progress. We reserve the right at any time um, to visit the selected respondent and to monitor quality assurance. As part of our commitment to being more outcomes oriented, we actively and regularly collaborate with meetings with delegate agencies to measure and track implementation and effectiveness. We request key data and metrics from delegate agencies, including client level demographic, performance and service data, and set expectations um, for performance objectives. Upon award, delegate agencies will be expected to collect and report client level demographic performance and service data as stated in any resulting contract. The data platform that is utilized is called Aging IS, and we use this for tracking and reporting. It is the expectation that the delegate input any client and service information by the first week of the following month. The respondent must also enter assessment data and care plan into the T-care assessment. Delegate agencies must implement these policies and procedures to ensure privacy and confidentiality of both paper and electronic files. And delegate agencies must have the ability to submit reports electronically to DFSS. For more information about the city's information security and technology policies, you may visit the website listed on the slide. As part of contract management, we also look at client files, which may, must maintain a confidential file on each client. Files must also be kept in a secure, locked space. Any case notes must be in the file with supporting documentation. And the selected respondent must ensure that the information is accurate, complete, and current. The selected respondent must also have a mechanism for filing any client complaints or grievances regarding provider service delivery. 
DFSS reserves the right to create such a mechanism to be distributed, and a complaint log must be kept according to the name, client, date, and reason for dissatisfaction. Finally, for program evaluation and satisfaction surveys, there must be a process or procedure for evaluating and reporting the client's satisfaction with the delivery of service, as well as the outcomes. A survey must be administered, measuring the client family satisfaction, developed and provided to DFSS on a quarterly basis. As mentioned earlier, the respondent will use a computerized tracking system, in this case, Aging IS, to provide data, and we expect it to be completed by the fifth of the following month for the client served in the preceding months. The respondent will keep track of the units of service provided, as well as unduplicated counts of clients and other demographic data necessary for the program. Both program and financial reports are required of all funding providers, and DFSS requires that providers have a program and fiscal reporting system that will ensure the provision of accurate and timely uh, reporting. Reports must be submitted on time, and quarterly meetings um, or otherwise scheduled, sometimes we meet monthly, will be held with a delegate to discuss program operations. Attendance is mandatory, and it is not subject to reimbursement. The term of the contract executed under this RFP will be from October 1st, 2024 through September 30th, 2027. This is a three-year contract. Based on need, availability of funds, and contractor performance, we may extend this term for up to one year, with the extension not to exceed one year. Additional funding may be dependent on the respondent's performance and availability of funding. We anticipate funding one delegate agency to be awarded $550,000 annually, depending on the size of the proposed program. And this contract will operate on a reimbursement basis only. No advances will be given at this time. The initiative is administered by the DFSS, the Illinois Department on Aging via the Older Americans Act, federal, state, and Alzheimer's disease and related dementia funds under Title III-E. American Rescue Plan only if available. Consequently, all guidelines and requirements of DFSS and the State of Illinois and the Older Americans Act must be met. Should a respondent's contract be terminated or relinquished for wh whichever reason, we reserve the right to return to the pool of respondents generated from this RFP to select another qualified respondent. Um, this is a competitive process, and so we invite all nonprofit, for-profit, faith-based, private, and public institutions to apply, and respondents can apply as a single agency or in partnership with multiple agencies. Um, sub any subcontracted agencies must demonstrate competence and be able to implement programmatic elements. Individual agencies or subcontractors um, may contribute a minimum of 10% match, um, and administrative costs will be capped at 10% per application. Respondents who are current DFSS delegates whose existing contracts are not in good standing will not be considered. And funding is subject to availability. Uh, respondents should be aware that the city will make payments for services on a reimbursement basis, and payments will be made 30 days after voucher approval. Each eligible proposal will be evaluated on the strength of the proposal and responsive to the selection criteria. Failure to submit a complete proposal or to respond fully to all the requirements will cause this proposal to be deemed unresponsive and subject to rejection. The commissioner, upon review and recommendation of agencies, may reject, deny, or recommend agencies that have applied for grants based on previous performance and or area of need. DFSS reserves the right to ensure that all mandated services are available citywide and provided in a linguistically and culturally appropriate manner. So next we're going to review the selection criteria um, that will be evaluated. So the first section is community involvement. So the respondent must demonstrate a clear understanding of the target population, including their strengths and assets, as well as needs and challenges. 
The respondent has expertise working with the target population and has relevant capabilities and or infrastructure needed to serve this group, including an action plan for culturally diverse and competency in primary language. The respondent must demonstrate client and community engagement activities that inform service delivery. The respondent demonstrates a commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and access. The respondent's leadership reflects and engages the diverse people of communities it serves. Next, we will also evaluate organizational capacity. The respondent um, must be able to um, commit, and I'm sorry, I believe this may be an incorrect slide. Um, let me just pull the information. My apologies. Okay, just a moment. And we will get that corrected on the amendment. Um, organizational capacity. So we are going to be looking at qualified staff responsible for program oversight and management. The respondent will have adequate systems and processes to support monitoring program expenditures and fiscal controls, and that the respondent describes how data is collected and securely stores its data. Next slide, please. We will also be looking at the strength of the proposed program. The respondent clearly defines services to be provided directly or through partnerships that are appropriate to addressing the needs and achieving desired outcomes of the target population. The respondent's proposed program is supported by strong national or local evidence-based and aligns with best practices for the relevant field. The respondent has an effective approach to identifying and retaining program participants, and the respondent has partnerships or coordinates with other agencies to expand or improve services in a client-centered comprehensive way. Finally, the respondent is able to provide an estimate number of clients to be served. Again, we will update these slides for you all as well. Next slide, please. And this was the information that we just reviewed. We will also review performance management and outcomes. So the respondent must demonstrate evidence of strong past performance outcome goals and performance metrics and or other notable accomplishments in providing services to this target population. The respondent has experience using data to inform, improve its services or practices, and the respondent describes the ability to disaggregate data collected and uses the data to determine program delivery and program model design. And the final criteria is reasonable cost, budget justification, and leverage of funds. The respondent has the fiscal capacity to implement the proposed program. The respondent demonstrates reasonable implementation costs and funding requests relative to its financial and human resources, and the proposed budget supports the proposed scope of work or work plan. So in terms of attachment, we ask that you be sure to attach reports, studies, or other do documentation that shows performance toward reaching the program goals, demonstrate results and accomplishments. We ask that you attach resumes for key staff who are overseeing the program, and be sure to attach your organization's budget, as well as making sure all program requirements are addressed. Each eligible proposal will be evaluated on the strengths of the proposal and responsiveness to the selection criteria. DFSS reserves the right to consult with any other city departments during the evaluation process. Successful respondents must be ready to proceed with the proposed program within a reasonable period of time upon contracting. Failure to submit a complete proposal or respond fully to all requirements may make your submission subject to rejection. 
And as we stated earlier, the commissioner upon review of the recommended agency may reject, deny, or recommend agencies that have applied for grants based on previous performance and our area of need. We reserve the right to ensure that all mandated services are available citywide and provided in a linguistically and culturally appropriate manner. As we are having the pre-proposal webinar today, August 27th, um, the following timeline includes the due date for any pre-proposal questions this Friday, August 30th, 2024. Applications will be due Friday, September 13th, 2024 at 12 noon, and the program period will begin October 1st, 2024. Again, the term of the contract is October 1st, 2024 through September 30th, 2027. The amount of the RFP is for one year, 550,000, and the administrative cap is 10%. There's no match requirement for the program. You must submit a budget for one year, 12 months of services. The cost category definitions are attached and be thoughtful and inclusive when developing your budget. We generally cannot give you more money than what you ask and use reasonable costs um, to discuss how you determine the cost reflected in the budget. Some common mistakes that we see in budgets. One, check your fringes in your calculations. Supplies, these are frequently either over or under budgeted for. Client assistance, if this is an appropriate and allowable cost, please include it. Ensure that your job description titles and job description uploads have the same title. And please put a brief description of the job in the budget document itself. Put your budget in the appropriate column and show your match if you choose to do so. Again, all applications are due on Friday, September 13th, 2024 at 12 noon Central Time. And with that, I'll hand it along to Jillian to talk about e-procurement. Thank you, Stacy. Um, I see that we don't have any questions at this time, so I will move forward with a couple of application tips. Um, I wanna start by saying um, that we can't stress enough that applicants start their applications early and save as often as possible. Um, if you have never done business with the city of Chicago, please register into iSupplier, um, other, otherwise known as e-procurement ASAP. Review RFP narratives and application questions closely. Remember they align with the scope and the selection criteria. Use the information from the RFP for guidance in formulating your answers. There is a 4,000 character limit, which includes punctuations and spaces. Each response is allotted 4,000 characters. And please do not use the back button on your browser. And once again, start your application as early as you can and save as often as you can. Other tips work for working at e-procurement um, to submit multiple applications for a single RFP Applicants will need to set up a unique user account in iSupplier. The e-procurement system is not capable of submitting more than one distinct proposal per associated email address. Therefore, you must use a separate email address for each submittal proposal. You can submit your application and later amend it up until the due date of September 13th, 2024 at noon Central Time. Avoid the rush and possible mishaps by submitting early. Plan on submission taking approximately 30 to 60 minutes. Please be advised, late applications cannot and will not be accepted. Please also make use of the e-procurement hotline for help at 312-744-4357. Please note that the hotline operates only during business hours which are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And again, save your work often and submit early. Um, new agency requirements. We now um, require that agencies submit um, articles of incorporation and any amended articles of incorporation, um, an IRS affirmation letter. Um, this is for not-for-profit agencies only. This letter must be dated within 60 days of submission. You can obtain this by calling the IRS directly at 
877-829-5500. If you are a for-profit agency, submit your original letter from the IRS showing your FEIN number. A UEI, a UEI number is also required, as well as a CCR, which is the Central Contractor Registration. Please provide a copy of the entity overview page on the SAM.gov website. Lastly, a certificate of good standing letter with the state of Illinois is required. As of April um, of, of this year, we have a new labor peace order, agreement ordinance um, which will apply to all DFSS and CDPH delegates that have 20 or more employees working for their organization. Um, the only exemption is it does not apply to hospitals. Contractor must provide written notice to the commissioner or her designee within 72 hours of becoming aware that employees want to organize or that a union seeks to represent employees. Contractor must enter into an LPA within 90 days of receiving notice from a labor organization that it represents or seeks to represent employees. You may ask, what is an LPA? An LPA is an agreement between an employer and a labor union that ensures that an organizing drive is not impacted by union busting techniques, including employee retaliation and a return they will not strike or stop work in a way that will impact human services. For technical assistance, there on the DFSS, DFSS webpage, there is a link to the RFP of interest in training documents. Please see the alerts section on our website. For questions on registration and e-procurement technical assistance for delegate agencies, Please, free to con please be free to contact customer support at cityofchicago.org or call 312-744-4357. And then we also have a section on our website for training materials. Um, this includes documents and videos. You can go to the cityofchicago.org website and to online training materials. Um, we will now delve into entering responses and accepting amendments in e-procurement. In e Step one, um, select create quote from the drop down menu in the actions box and then click on go. This will take you to the application page where you can get started. If the RFP you are interested in has been amended, you will need to acknowledge and accept the amendment to start or submit a response. To accept the amendment, click on View Amendment History. Step two, to begin the acceptance and acknowledgement process, follow these steps by clicking View Amendment History. First, you click on the document number. Next, you click on the infinity or eyeglass icon to review the amended changes to the RFP. And then third, you click on the Acknowledge Amendments button to acknowledge a receipt and understanding of the changes and proceed. By acknowledging the amendment, you are indicating that you are aware of the changes made to the RFP in the amendment. Now, when you get to this screen, click on the I accept checkbox and then click on Acknowledge. Then click on yes to indicate that you confirm your acknowledgement of the amendment. Lastly, click on the checkbox that you accept the terms and conditions and then click on accept to actually accept them. That is the final step in acknowledging and accepting the amendment. How to submit the actual application. When you are ready to submit, start by saving your draft one last time and then click continue. If you are missing information, you will be given an error message at the top of the, at the, top of the page. This is extremely helpful that the, the, the program gives you um, a notice basically stating that something is missing, something is not right, so that 
you can submit a, a very accurate proposal. Um, usually the error message directs to something left undone in the application. In the last example, the error message indicated that the lines find under the, found under the lines tab had not been filled out. In this example, the error is about an unanswered question in the application or requirement section. The quote value refers to your, in this case, missing answer. Once your application is free from errors and you are ready to proceed, um, you can go ahead and submit. At this point, clicking continue should put your application into the review and submit phase. Once you get to this screen, this will be your last chance to review all of your data, all of your responses, and to confirm that they are accurate. Check your attachments and scroll to the bottom of the screen to see all of your responses. At the bottom of that screen, you will be asked to provide an electronic signature. Be sure to fill in that signature box, fill in that signature before checking the box. And then lastly, you click submit to submit your proposal. Make sure that you see the submittal confirmation screen. The e-procurement system will send a confirmation email within 24 hours of your submission. Please call or email me if you desire confirmation prior to then or if you didn't receive the, the confirmation at all. And lastly, we're going to pause for questions. Um, the question deadline is um, August 30th, this Friday. So um, if you happen to have any questions after this webinar, um, please feel free to send them to Stacey Sabita. Um, I will be turning to the slide with her information shortly. Okay, no questions. Um, so if, if you have any questions from, from now until the 30th, or if you need more information, please feel free to contact Stacey Sabita. Um, her number is 312-743-7272. And her email is stacy.sabita at cityofchicago.org. And for non-programmatic questions, if you need assistance regarding e-procurement, please free, feel free to reach out to the e-procurement hotline. Again, they're open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. They can reach, be reached via phone at 312-744-4357 and, and via email at customer support at cityofchicago.org. And you could also reach out to me. My name is Jillian Black, and my email is jillian.black at cityofchicago.org. Um, I see we, we do have one question. Um, it says, what? would you be able to send us the presentation that was given today? So the presentation will be uploaded on the DFSS, DFSS website. Um, please give it about five, five to seven days to be uploaded. But yes, it will be provided. Um, Stacey, were you about to say something? No, I was just alerting you that there was a question. Okay. And I don't think we have any other questions at this time. So Stacy, is there anything you wanted to? Sure, just thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon. Um, and thank you for your interest in the caregiver respite RFP. Um, again, it will be due on Friday, September 13th at 12 p.m. noon, um, but we will be releasing uh, an amendment and um, you know, you'll be able to get any questions answered. Please submit those prior to this Friday, August 30th. Thank you. Thank you everyone for attending our webinar and enjoy the rest of your day. Oh, someone's asking for the link, Jillian, for the YouTube page. Okay, as soon as, are we still?
as soon as we receive the link, I will be sending it on to Stacy uh, to distribute. Do we have one? Okay, she said thank you. All right, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Thank you, everyone.